was perfect. Okay, so March 13th is National Umbrellas Day because what is more important in some rainy weather than a nice umbrella? It's not raining today and we are in fact in our houses, but we wanted to celebrate appropriately. So we have our umbrellas. So for National Umbrella Day, we decided to share an intervention with you that includes, wait for it, an umbrella. So yeah. let me share my screen. Okay. So the anger umbrella is something that is not new. Uh, when I was looking to give credit to the creator, there's just a lot of different people who have done things with the anger umbrella. So um, definitely not a new idea. But what I have done with this is taken that traditional anger umbrella idea and um, drank a ton of coffee while making it and then amped it up and made it into um, what you're seeing now. So this is the emotion umbrella. So this is a good analogy for explaining anger and other emotions uh, in that we have primary and secondary emotions. Our emotions have layers. So anger, which is the secondary emotion, meaning it comes second, it often protects us from those underlying emotions that um, might not feel as easy, like uh, sadness, um, fear, or embarrassment. I, for one, do not like to feel embarrassed, uh, so anger may feel a little bit easier. So in a way, anger protects us, much like an umbrella. So it keeps our other feelings safe and um, keeps them kind of hidden from the outside world. Uh, thus the anger umbrella. So while our anger can protect us, it can become a problem if we get so used to relying on our anger umbrella that we forget to acknowledge the feelings underneath. Um, and then anger becomes our primary response, even though it's, it's a secondary emotion. And we aren't able to deal with the anger and close our anger umbrella until we've pulled out those other underlying emotions and dealt with them. Um, this is something that I use a ton when working with people who, you know, seek out anger management um, <clears throat> because we can't just nip the anger in the bud and not address any of the stuff that's fueling the anger or else it's going to keep coming back and we're going to put band-aids on it. Um, so true anger management is learning what's under this anger umbrella and dealing with the core emotions. Um, and then you just kind of naturally see less rain and, and need your umbrella less. So that's the basic idea of the, the emotion umbrella. Um, so I've created a handout, which is going to be made available to you for free um, on how you can work with a child adolescent client on exploring anger and those underlying emotions. So for this intervention, after you explain what the emotion umbrella is, you have here this, this um, beautifully drawn by Sharpie uh, illustration of an umbrella that toot I did. Toot your own horn, Christina, just toot your own horn. <laughs> um, so the rain is going to represent the those outside forces or those outside stressors that we don't really feel like we have control over, much like the weather. Um, Elise and I both live in Ohio where the weather- It rains all the time. It's or, beautiful today though. Yeah, it, of course, when we have our umbrellas, it isn't raining, um, but you can never predict the, the weather. It's like a fun game if, um, you know, if it's actually, it's a really fun game. Every time it rains, Elisa does not have an umbrella. That's the game. Okay. Well, from here on out, National Umbrella Day, we have to be more vigilant with our umbrellas. We can go with that. It won't happen, but we can go with it. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so for this, um, walking a client through the emotion umbrella, Let's look at the, the raindrops as those external stressors, those things that kind of feel like out of our control and trigger uh, our emotional response. Um, those are the things that might have made you angry and need to grab your umbrella for protection. 
on the top part of the umbrella, have the client write down the ways that they responded to those stressful things, um, how they acted or reacted in anger. Um, and then under the umbrella, where we are, um, have the client write down some of the emotions that if they dig a little deeper under that anger that they were feeling first and, and that fueled that anger. So here's an example that I created. Um, and I wrote in a couple of stressors, failing a test, getting grounded, having uh, bullies at school. And then in the umbrella, that is my anger reaction. So when I failed a test, I crumpled it up and tossed it. When I was bullied at school, I went home and I pushed my little brother and in turn became the bully. Um, when my mom grounded me, I screamed at her, right? Um, so then if you dig a little deeper into each of those scenarios and the anger that you felt, uh, and it does take practice because you will talk to someone and say, well, how'd you feel? Mad. Well, how else? Just mad. So it takes a little bit of practice to dig under it. Um, but at doing so, I realized that uh, underneath that anger, I felt embarrassed that my mom caught me doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Um, when I failed the test, I felt disappointed because I wanted to do better on the test. And nobody likes bullying. And so I felt sad, a little insecure and self-conscious when the kids were teasing me. So that's the, that's the first step that you can do. Um, but if you want to overachieve, like oftentimes I do when I drink too much caffeine, you can look for some resolution. So now we understand the anger a bit. Uh, that's more the psychoeducational piece. Now, what are we going to do about it? Side note, holding an umbrella for an extensive amount of time is kind of hurts your hand. You look way more comfortable. I am. It's resting on my chair. Okay. Well, I, I have like my a brain. Tiny one. You have like an adult size one. Yes. Not me. Okay. So let's look at, okay. Now we kind of understand the anger a little bit more, um, but we don't want to, the umbrella is heavy. I just illustrated my point. We don't want to hold this anger umbrella for the rest of all time. So um, think of the sun coming out and, you know, when the sun comes out, you can close your umbrella. So when the sun comes out, we can deal with our primary emotions, those that are under the umbrella. And then once those feel better to us, uh, we can close up the umbrella. We don't need it anymore. We don't need the anger to protect us. We do this by learning healthier ways to respond to stressful out of our control situations instead of reacting with anger. So in, in this part of the intervention, maybe just have that conversation and explore with your client, what are some ways that you can cope with uncomfortable feelings that anger covers up? How would you like to feel instead? Because chances are no one wants to feel these uncomfortable feelings. That's why they're uncomfortable. So this is a, uh, the second intervention that you can do with the client. Um, looking at this picture of the sun, in the middle part of the sun, write down some ways that you can manage your anger and react in a different way to whatever those stressful things are. How can you show kindness to others instead of lashing out and, and showing anger? And how can you show kindness to yourself? Because anger hurts us as well, or it can. On the outer parts, those little triangles, write down some feelings that you would like to experience instead of the uncomfortable feelings that underlie and follow anger. So here's an example. Um, you know, thinking back to those previous situations, um, if I'm being bullied, I can tell a teacher that others are teasing me. Um, with my mom grounding me, I can apologize and I can use my words and use this opportunity to explain why it was that I had lied in the first place, kind of get through that conflict. Um, and then coping skills. What are some things to just get my anger in control enough to where I don't respond from a place of anger? I can practice deep breathing. I can take a brain break. I can leave the situation. Um, I don't know, Elise, what do you do when you're ang angry? What's your go-to coping? What's my go-to coping? I um, have learned my own piece of self-awareness to know that I know if I'm angry, I'm going to say things that are hurtful and I'm going to lash out at others because I'm hurting inside. 
So I know to use my words and tell people close to me, like I need a moment Mm -hmm. and I need to walk away. Now, when you're working with young kids, something that, um, my children are, um, they can't write yet. Like they're learning how to write They're four. Um, so one of the things that's really good that I try to tell parents that I work with is if you're working with a kid and they're dysregulated because they're having these big emotions and their little teeny bodies is always get on their level. Don't be above them, get at their level or slightly below it. So they feel less intimidated and start to teach them how to do the breathing with them. And that's a good thing you can do is like that touch feeling when it's your child or like, so this is why you can talk to parents about it is to use it, like feel my breath coming in and start teaching that breathing piece. And also like rocking is a natural soother. So is like rubbing backs. Those are two big things. So like, I know when my kids are dysregulated, that's one thing I do for myself. I can feel myself. I know I'm going to be mean. So I'm like, I need a moment. And when I'm calmed down, then we'll talk about it. And there's nothing wrong with taking that break when you feel upset and teaching kids and your clients how to say that to parents and then talking to parents, like, you know, we're trying to give them that space to let them learn how to regulate because everybody's emotions are high and you can acknowledge that and take a moment and address the problem 10 minutes later or address the behavior 10 minutes later. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. And for kids or clients who they might not have access to um, a parent or a person who can help model that and help um, kind of co-regulate them. But some of those things are things that you can do for yourself, self-soothing. Like you had said, like I may not have someone to um, kind of model that breathing, but I can put my hands on my stomach and and yeah. walk myself through it. Or, um, you know, there's no one to hug me. Well, I'm, you know, I'm holding an umbrella, but I can give myself a hug. Um, right. And another so. big one is if you're wanting to teach like children to do their own breathing, breathing, um, especially younger children, the belly breathe song through Sesame street is like amazing. Cause it teaches you like, these are all these ugly feelings that are on our umbrella. And then like, I know that, and this is how I can put my hands on my stomach and start taking breaths in and out. And then they do it to the song, which is like awesome. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. So, um, you know, depending on what the difficulties are and what the, um, clients coping strategies are and resources are, you can fill in the center of the sun with some of the things that they can do. And then on the outside piece on the little triangles, write down some of the feelings that they would like to feel. Um, and that can just kind of shift the thinking from, okay, anger, here's what made me feel angry. Here's what was under the anger. Here's what I can do instead. And here are these awesome ways that I can feel instead. Um, so, you know, I've written down some examples like joy, feeling proud of myself. If I, you know, I'm feeling disappointed in failing the test, I want to feel proud of myself, feeling loved, feeling happy, relaxed. And so this just kind of ends it on a positive note to where you can start to have those conversations of how reacting in a more honest, genuine place, rather than just, you know, using that anger umbrella to shield you can help you reach these um, more comfortable, um, positive emotions. So that and I think is it's, and I think it's really empowering when you're giving kids these tools because they feel more in control of their own self, their own emotion, their own body versus just getting in trouble, which we don't want. Yeah. It's all, yeah. It's all about empowerment because I think, um, all of us feel out of control at times, especially younger people. And oftentimes they are very out of control. Um, so anytime you can help them find ways to feel in control, that is definitely empowering. So that is the emotion umbrella intervention, um, which is free to you and, um, Stay tuned for more stuff because we love giving resources away. Now I think we should try to close it. Okay. Close the umbrella. We're closing our anger umbrella. Mine's broken. I've broken anger. Oh.